Hey, hey, we're your hosts. I'm Charlotte. And I'm Jonathan. And we believe that one of the most valuable gifts you can give to yourself is the gift of wholeness through integrating all aspects of what it means to be human. And in this podcast, we're bringing you insight, information, and inspiration to move from a stressful to stress-free life. Your journey to becoming even healthier and happier starts right now. Welcome to Wellness Theory, the podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome to today's show. I am so happy to be here today because I have a very special guest slash host with me and I know you've all been missing him. So uh, welcome, Jonathan. Thank you. Glad, glad to be back on again after all this time. I know, I know. I've missed you for sure. I know our listeners have missed you. So tell everyone, like, where have you been? Like, what's been going on? Why have I been for pretty much this year being almost like solo hosting? Yes, so uh, Charlotte's been solo hosting, not because I left the wellness area, but because um, another interesting opportunity has come up. Uh, so when we were in Thailand, we got a contacted to open up a luxury health club. Um, and it's something, it's one of my other passions I like to do, which is consulting and helping investors to see a different approach to, to, to health and wellness facilities, um, instead of the same old copy and paste method that's currently happens around the world. So I jumped onto that project and it's just been keeping me busy for, for the last <laughs> nearly year. Exactly. But it, it looks amazing. Guys, if you're ever in Abu Dhabi, let us know and we'll share the details yes. of where this luxury health club is. Uh, and obviously you can come down and, and train and whatnot. Um, I've been lucky enough to be able to train there. It's a really nice place. What I really love is the fact that it is slightly different in terms of the approach to a typical gym. Right. And that is really is your background. So there's going to be a lot of listeners that don't know who you are yeah. that have been listening and perhaps just found us this past year. So I'd love for you to perhaps just share a bit about your professional experience and then we'll dive into like personally, you know, what's led you to do what you do today. Because one of the topics that I really want to dive into you today is about breath work because it's something that has like picked up massively in the last few years. And there's a lot of um, kind of myths about it and there's lots of good practices and perhaps poor practices in and around it. And it's, I think it's just really important to dive into that topic. So the floor is yours. Well, th oh, thank you very much. So in terms of my professional background, I started in health and wellness at the age of 16. So that was 23 years ago. So John is... <laughs> I jokingly say becoming my silver fox because it's got some nice little greys coming through. <laughs> That's just wisdom. I've got too much wisdom in my head. Coming out head. I mean, your face. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, so I was 23 years uh, this year in health and fitness, started as a fitness professional, personal training, and pretty much done that. Been a personal trainer, went into fitness management for the first 10 years of my career and realized very, very quickly after around about that 10 year mark that there is more to health and wellness than just eating right and um training hard because that's what i used to do my whole concept was training twice a day six seven days a week eating so religiously that i would sacrifice um, any social um, events um, i wouldn't be going i wouldn't go out anywhere because i couldn't eat exactly how i wanted to eat so i'd pretty much train work go home <laughs> that's better that that was pretty much it for years because i had this perception of how working in the fitness industry um that you have to look and you had to act so as a trainer you had to have a six-pack you had to look like a cover model and all this stuff which is absolute rubbish by the way um but little did i know at the time i was causing myself more harm than good as i was going through that um as i was going through my career and going through from personal trainer to fitness manager to general manager um i just training so hard and trying to keep up with everything and with the with each new role came added stress and i was still trying to keep up with that and i thought okay what's the best way to get rid of stress train hard so that's what i did i kept training harder and more and longer and just caused myself so much um pain physical pain um that i was just holding on to and i thought my solution was that is eat cleaner train harder and i've just done that for 10 years yeah. <laughs> The, this is funny, isn't it? Because we often think that the same actions that got us to where we are are going to get us where it is we need to go. And the reality <laughs> is like, that's absolute BS. <laughs> exactly. As you get, and again, as you go, as you get older, you go through your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, things change and you have to adapt to how, to what your body needs, or what your mind needs as well. And that's what I didn't do. I just kept doing the exact same thing in my 20s into my 30s as well, which um, 
my body did not like at all no and it impacted you in many ways so at some point on that journey obviously our paths crossed um and that was when we were both working here in Abu Dhabi together in a health club um and that that pain that you refer to w- was coming through wasn't it it was coming through like in in how you were feeling about life in how you were feeling about your life situation and the people you were around you uh, got yourself a nickname didn't you sure. from the people that you worked with yes 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 so I used to have the nickname of the Hulk not because of he was strong um, a superhero because he was very angry and that was pretty much me is always constantly working kind of 15 16 hours a day uh just training so much with the added stress of not really understanding how to i say manage people correctly or in the in the in a more effective way um i would usually just snap into everything boil to the surface um, i'd get angry very quickly snap very quickly and i'd do that i've done that for very very many years i think it's mainly because i didn't understand my own emotional states and I didn't understand how to actually, well, anyone else's emotional state. I was like, I tell you what to do. You should do it right the first time. And if you don't, I snap because I, I get very angry. And I had no idea why that was happening at the time. So you didn't know why that was happening at the time. But in hindsight now, like, why was that happening? Well, for many reasons. One of the first reasons was not knowing actually how I was feeling, what I was feeling. Um, not really understanding what emotions were. So I grew up in a very traditional health um, household. I was born in South Africa, uh, grew up there to the age of nine. Uh, in a traditional household where my dad worked, I am stayed at home, looked after the, myself and my two sisters. And from just looking from the outside, I was never taught this consciously by my dad, but it was the old school man method of men don't show emotions, apart from like anger and spite sarcastic tendencies and that but you don't show vulnerability as a man you keep your emotions bottled in and you push them down and you carry on you you get on with life type of thing and that's that's pretty much what i i took from seeing my dad operate every day and um, live every day and i just kind of took that on board um, as you do as a kid you just absorb and you soak up everything around you um so when i went into the work world my kind of preset conditioning was is I can show anger, that's fine. I can be angry at people, I can snap at people, but I can't show vulnerability. I can't ask for help. I have to do things my way because everyone else's way is wrong. So, and then if my way is not working, I can't admit that it's wrong. I have to just keep doing the same thing, but with more more anger, more aggression, more more fear, um, creating more fear within the team to try and get things done. Um, And I did get a result, but (laughs) it was a very toxic um, environment that I I was creating. At that time it was i remember us kind of going head to head yes at one point so the health club we worked at was in a mall <laughs> yes. and I, I remember us being outside the the club i can't remember what it was you said to me but you said you said something that then triggered me yes. and all of my stuff yes. um and i just remember that being it i was like right so, something's got to change either i'm gonna move and go work somewhere else or you yeah. need to move and go somewhere else or we need to figure this out um that was my perspective but I didn't know obviously inside you was already feeling like something needed to change anyway so tell us about that what was those some of those moments that made you think this isn't working anymore something's got to give um well per, on a personal level it was the amount of pain, physical pain I was experiencing at the point, um, literally my whole body just felt like it was, I was like 120 years old daily and the pain, the suffering, the the, the stiffness, the tightness, the, the exhaustion. Um, it was just, because I was, like I said, I was working 15, 16 hours a day. I was drinking about nine coffees a day. Um, so my, that. yeah, my dream, my adrenal system was just shot to pieces. You literally had those low, yeah. like, those low cigars, cigars yeah. <laughs> like Cafe Nero or something. Yeah, and, right. um, you'd go for like two of them a day. I uh, know, like, every shocked. other day, every other day. Oh, it was a <laughs> lot. Even the barrister was just like, whoop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, I was going, I was, I was try, again, I was using it as a crutch to try and get me through the day. Um, and then coupled on to the fact that, um, basically people I was working with weren't doing what I wanted them to do that then just triggered my stress response and my anger even more. And by the end of that, I was just exhausted. I'd go, or I'd go home, I'd crash. I wouldn't get any um, actually proper restorative sleep. I'd wake up early again the next day, back into work because I, I, I was working 16 hours because I didn't want to leave 
fun because I couldn't trust people to do their job. Enjoy, so enjoy control. Yeah, exactly. So it was like that control. I couldn't release, relinquish that control. I had to micromanage, um, which causing me more stress. Um, and all of that lack of sleep, way too much caffeine. Um, obviously, a lot of anger showing up just uh, presented itself in a lot of physical issues for me, especially chronic pain. So um, at one point, I developed uh, chronic pain in the middle of my back. And that over the period of years started to just radiate itself and get more and more and more intense. At that time, I didn't realize that that was a signal telling me that something's wrong here. You need to take like, take a step back and look at yourself. But I just kept pushing through as I normally do. It's like, okay, let's train. Um, let's, see, let's, let's eat, let's just do this, let's do that, have a massage. I went to see doctors. I had injections in my spine. I had a chiropractor, a work, physio work. Uh, nothing was getting rid of it. It would give a temporary relief, but then come straight back again, even stronger than before. Um, and I dealt with that for about four years. Um, to the and some point, it, it's to one point, it got so bad where I just remember I would be sitting in front of a computer and I just feel the pain radiating up my head to the point where it actually um, affect my vision. Mm. I get like blurry vision for a few seconds. Um, so um, that to it, that was the kind of physical limit that I got to. I thought, okay, this is ridiculous. Now it can't. It shouldn't be this hard to to to, to live and to work. Um, and from the work perspective, it was felt like a trying to draw blood out of a stone, trying to get people to do what I wanted them to do. Um, and it took me again a long time to realize that okay, maybe the way I'm doing things is not the most effective. It's not really the most resourceful way to do things. And those two couples, um, in fact, just kind of took me to a tipping point. Whereas I can't keep doing what I'm doing anymore. Um, I'm I'm tired of being tired. I'm tired of being in pain. I'm tired of um, just being in this position of feeling unfulfilled, of feeling just frustrated and angry all the time. Mm. The thing that I dislike about your story, other than the fact that obviously you were suffering, is that so many other people have the same story yes. or very similar in their own unique ways. And it's something that's so unnecessary. So the thing I love about your story is what happens next. <laughs> so what what happened next? Yeah, it's, um, for me, it was that I got so sick of being in pain and being tired that I thought, okay, there's got to be another alternative. There's got to be another solution here. Um, and I think one of the first kind of books I got introduced to uh, was, well, there's a couple of books. It was Leadership by the Book and The Chimp Paradox. And, and sorry, and Robin Sharma's uh, Lead Without a Title. Those three books are kind of the first three that I'd read in the personal development space. Before yeah. that, it was all, all non-fiction yeah. um, fiction style books. So those are the first three that came to mind. You got two of them for me. <laughs> well, I, see, I was going to kind of mention this because sometimes, you know, it's, we don't just naturally start doing something that we wouldn't normally no. do, right? And you wasn't reading those kinds of no. books, right? You like reading about like fantasy. Exactly. Like dragons. Exactly. A lot of fantasy um, Superhero. But, <laughs> I think because I was also on my own kind of journey, yeah. I was finding some value in these books as well. But so I kind of gifted you one or two and a manager that we had at the time also gifted you a book yeah. as well. So I think sometimes just that presenting something for somebody in a non-judgmental way and in a way that there is no expectation, I think can actually be a really powerful move. But it, you can't just go and give somebody a book. Just that, for anyone listening. Well, like, the, the, first, the first book I read was that leadership by the book was given to me by, by um, a regional manager at the time. And I didn't read it straight away. I had it sitting on the shelf for, I don't know, a good couple of months. And he kept asking me, so have you read the book yet? I said, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I haven't read it yet. Um, and then he said, have you read the book yet? Because there is, because I'm not, um, I am not an overly like religious person, and the book were, has a religious element to it. Um, so that's I, that was putting me off reading it at the time, and I kept saying that to him. So I'm not really religious. It's, it's not about religion. Just read it. Uh, eventually, got around to reading it, <laughs> and the the story of the book resonated with me massively because it was exactly like my story. The guy was basically working stupid amounts of hours, in pain, suffers a heart attack. Um, Kind of and goes with that realization of why am I doing this for what or for what purpose and then start uh, started to again make changes in his life to to do things in a more resourceful way and get a much more ef effective and resourceful outcome yeah. should we say and a much outcome, a more warranted and a deserved outcome mm -hmm. and then from that book that's when I read the Chimp Paradox and Robin Sharma lead that title and those I started to implement some of those concepts into what I was doing mm -hmm. and. 
I've started to get a different result, a much easier result. And it was like, okay, this is interesting. It was like that light bulb moment that clicked for me when it comes to working with other people Mm -hmm. is, oh, okay, I can get people to do things I want them to do without having to shout at them and make them fearful of me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, It's just how you approach it and understanding how they work. Um, And those books helped me to sort of implement that side of it because I remember when seeing you manage some of the staff in the same club we're working in you would get a much quicker and different result and people didn't hate you for it <laughs> and it's like i was scared of you and i said how are you doing that and that's when i started to realize oh, okay that's how it's 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 not dictating it's understanding and understanding how where people come from and how they process information how they how they work or what they need um especially understanding their emotional states as well because yeah. that's something i didn't understand on, on my own emotional state yeah. um at that time and that's when i started to dig further into what emotions were and what what i was feeling because i used to bury everything i know i didn't all apart from anger frustration fear i had no idea what i was feeling you know, what, yeah. what what the other emotions were <laughs> yeah. and also i think it comes down to the intention behind why you were trying to get people to do what you needed to do like you were trying to get people to do what they needed to do because you needed to get the results you needed to yes. get whereas the way i tend to lead is hey we're kind of in this together you're here for a reason because you chose to be here what do you want yeah. okay let's figure out how we can get what you want and then naturally the club result if you like came yeah. through because of thinking about what the other person wanted and you're right it is very much a case of understanding where other people are emotionally but also where they are in their life and yeah. I think it's really, really interesting because emotional intelligence doesn't necessarily get enough attention, I think. It gets some when we're talking about leadership and management and stuff. But emotional regulation, I think, is what doesn't get spoken about enough. And I think that was the game changer for both you and I, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, you know, John being very kind here. Um, I wasn't a perfect leader. Um, but it's 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 something I think that was the main difference. Yeah. So talk to us about emotional regulation. <laughs> well, for me, um, regulating my emotions were using external sources to do that, yeah. where it was coffee, training, um, uh, other entertainment tv games stuff like that to try and forget about the crap i was going through and just kind of escape from escape from my emotions instead of regulate them um it wasn't until i started to understand my emotions why like kind of what i was suppressing what i was keeping inside from all those years from childhood growing up mm-hmm. um i started to realize okay i'm actually holding on to things this is why I'm getting so angry all the time. And but I didn't know why I was getting angry until I started to look um, to kind of delve a bit deeper into it and go, okay, why am I feeling this way? Why am I acting this way? Why are these small little things triggering me triggering me so much? Yeah. Um, and that's when I started to kind of look into ways of how and uh, trying to regulate my emotions and started to understand them better. Um, and I think the first thing I tried was guided meditation. Was this before or after you went and did the uh, Robin Sharma course? This is before. So I don't, oh, yeah. Okay. So this is before I'd done the immersive Robin Sharma um, um, certification course. And I tried guided meditation, didn't really get on with it. No, I, I kept I, telling you, I tried yeah, this tried one. It, yeah, so like, I yeah. tried it. I said, no, it's, 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 the, it's the talking that just distracted me all the time. I couldn't get on with it. Um, and then from there, I switched to. I thought, okay, let's try, let's try something different. So then I found, I got, well, I found uh, Wim Hof. So the whole retention breathing um, kind of mentality, breath work. I thought, okay, breathing, I can breathe. I don't have to follow a guided thing. I just kind of follow a set pattern of breathing and a bit of music in the background. Let's do that. Um, so after the first session, I thought, okay, that's that's an interesting feeling. I just felt this really kind of buzzing sensation through my whole body. I felt lighter. I felt calmer. Um, I didn't feel as angry anymore. I thought, okay, this is a interesting concept. Um, like it's, it seemed to give me an instant, mm-hmm. like an instant relief and an instant, uh, an instant result. I thought, okay, I'm gonna I'll let's lean into this even more. Um, so I started doing it more regularly every morning, and it was yeah, and it's it just started to become. I could feel myself more operating from a from a much calmer state. I found myself snapping less regularly. I found myself getting frustrated and angry a lot less. 
Um, and then I also, I think you introduced me to Joe Dispenza yeah. as well. So I've done, I remember doing one of his visualizations and again, the same thing because of the guided voice as well. It was, it, it did distract me initially when I first started doing it, but I got the concept of it and then I tried to tie the two together. So during the retention breathing, when you actually have to hold your breath for as long as you can, I decided to try and add in that visual, um, that visualization exercise into that retention phase. Um, and what I was visualizing was a basically just a, the way I wanted to be, mm. by the way I, was, I wanted to be. So instead of wishing, oh, I, I don't want to have any more pain. I don't want to be tired anymore. I was thinking just visualizing myself as healthy, as strong, as as energized, as like we uh, like completely pain free, just in perfect health, perfect condition. And then I kept doing that for every single morning for 20 minutes every morning. And then two weeks goes by and I stand up from one of the sessions that I did and something felt different, but I didn't realize what it was. It took me a while to realize that that chronic pain I had in my back for four years had completely disappeared. And I remember just coming to the kitchen and telling you about it. And I was just saying, I've got no pain anymore. It's so like, yeah, honestly. it was like, just like move because normally I can't, like if I twist my spine or move my shoulder, I can just feel that that, that pain's always there. Um, and then this was gone. I was just moving and just, there's no pain. Everything's just free. It was like that. It was a crazy feeling. And that is when the light fully switched on to a, like a different approach. There's more to health and wellness than just the physical, than just eating right and training. It's the, it's that's a tiny part. Yeah. That's such a small part um, compared to your mental and emotional health. And that's what kind of breath work for me, breathing, like that, that breathing exercise really helped me to bring myself back into my body and, and understand how I was feeling mm -hmm. and actually release these emotions. And because what I realized like, at that moment, I didn't know why that pain went. Mm -hmm. And so I started digging deeper into it and realized that I had all these suppressed emotions I was holding on to from learned behavior when I was a child of don't, don't show vulnerability, don't show sadness and all this stuff. So I like, lock it down. Mm -hmm. And all that was causing, it, it was causing a, it was physical symptoms. I was experiencing chronic pain, tightness, um, exhaustion, it was it was it was exhausting holding on to all of that a lot of people don't realize that emotion is an energy yeah right they don't realize that actually it can get stacked up in our system right because sometimes it's like okay well anger you can't always see anger you can't always see sadness yeah. or guilt or shame yeah. or whatever so it's like well, where would it be inside the body you know because it's not a yeah. thing that we can actually touch yeah but actually that energy it does right it almost like just clumps together yeah. somewhere and that was what was happening for you well exactly like, you know, like everything everything is energy it's just uh, like different vibrations different frequencies and emotions are that is emotion energy and motion and that energy when not processed or not it's not flowing yeah. gets stuck yeah. it's stuck in your nervous system because mm -hmm. your nervous system holds information and information is energy so energy gets stored you don't process it you don't um, let it flow properly it gets stuck and when it gets stuck the only way for it to let itself out is through the physical body and it gives you physical symptoms whether it's pain tightness illness um, disease whatever that is those physical symptoms you're experiencing are notifications from your nervous system to say hold on you need to take a step back there's something you, you're you, there, there's a misalignment it's un, there's an unbalance within your body um so take a step back and pay attention <laughs> um and that's what i started to realize is all these symptoms i've been experiencing for so many years it's not because there's something wrong with my body is my body is trying to help me by telling me you need to pay attention and you need to look after it <laughs> um and that's what i started to do is that's what the, the breathing and the the visualization work helped me to do is connect with my body and understand why I was feeling the way I was feeling yeah and then when you obviously then went in to do that um leadership training with Robin Sharma yeah. which then helped you almost like map out mm. okay the almost like the logic to what you was experiencing to some extent yeah. is that fair to say yeah yeah definitely is um doing that doing that that leadership training because like most people would think our oh, leadership training is about how to manage a team how to do this but it's not like leadership training is how to manage yourself how to regulate your your mental emotional physical health because you can't help other people if you're in a if you're in a complete unbalanced chaotic state so it's understanding of why i think like i do but also why other people do yeah. why they feel how to regulate emotion how to think about it. so it's 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 more equity as opposed to um, equality and that's the whole point of leadership training is to be able to treat people individually based on their needs and their wants how they learn how they 
what's going on in their life as opposed to treating everyone the same. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the biggest things I learned in there is about it doesn't matter how you lead people, you've first got to lead yourself yeah. to be able to lead others. Yeah. And that's all about looking after your mental health, your emotional health, your physical health, your energetic health. Otherwise, you can't. You're you're basically giving away your energy or your very small reserves of energy that you have yeah. <laughs> to, to other people instead of um it like influencing them and and motivating them to be able to kind of generate their own energy so you 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 don't you're not giving away your energy you're 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 securing you're saving your energy because you know to be selfless you have to be selfish yeah and if anything that actually amplifies your own energy when you start to operate like that so it sounds a bit strange you've got to exert some energy Mm. to be able to create more but actually we do we generate our own exactly yeah we we, yeah we always generate we don't just have it and then, then it goes and then that's it we have to wait till tomorrow to get to, to <laughs> replenish it itself oh, people think that's yeah true. and it is it's, yeah it's, oh, I've got, oh my energy tanks are like are, are depleted now i need sleep i need oh tomorrow i'll do i'll do this task tomorrow when i've got more energy yeah. it's like it's it's not the way it is we generate the energy How, if our energy resources are depleted is because we've made that happen yeah um through how we think how we feel how we're how we're acting what we're what we're focusing on yeah there was something else that I want to touch upon that I know happened for you during that certification. And that was when you told me that you was in a room surrounded by businessmen, mm. essentially, from different yeah. cultures, uh, varying different um, age groups. But then there was a very profound kind of impact when you started to hear them speaking about yeah. their experiences. Yeah, we had in that in that room, we had um, executive CEOs, business owners. Um, I think in terms of titles i was one of the like on like the lowest ones um, in that room and the whole concept of the course was lead without a title if the titles and status don't matter it's about how you show up as a leader and it's funny because we always think that oh if you're in, you're in that position as an executive or a ceo like you must know so much um when it comes to leading a team and hearing some of these people speak and realizing that wow okay they're literally trying to figure out the basics as well and they're a CEO or they're a business owner. Um, it's it really makes you think that it doesn't like it really comes down to that fact that status and titles don't matter at all. Yeah. It's all about how you show up yeah. um, for for the people you're leading um, and how much you're willing to look after yourself and look to be able to look after your team. Uh, how significant do you think it was for you, given how you were raised? Like you said earlier, is like not showing emotions. Then being a room full of men, what was there? What, fifty of you, maybe more, maybe less. Yeah, it's fifty-five people in that room. Fifty-five people in that room, um, and there was these men that essentially you would have looked up to, mm. right, um, to some extent because of the roles that they held. Yeah. Right? Because that was almost like the old way of thinking. Yes. But yet, then they were opening up about their emotions and their feelings. That must have been almost like a bit of a shock to see that in many ways, because you hadn't been exposed to it before. Well, no, exactly, because um, the 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 old school way of thinking for men is to hide your emotions and don't show them. Is like if if something vulnerable comes up, you joke about it, um, yeah, and then you down yeah, or go down the pub, yeah. yeah, drink it, drink it away, drink those feelings away. Um, but it's it kind of just it just went to reiterate that it doesn't matter, man, woman, child, whatever. It's like all emotions are valid. It's like um, you need to express them to be able to process them, mm-hmm. uh, but you just need to express them in a healthy way. Yeah. Um, because if you don't, they come out in a very unhealthy way, like mine did, which is through anger, fear, pain. <laughs> and I think that's the most important thing for all men to realize is it's okay to show emotion. It doesn't matter what other people think about it or what they think about you. Like at the end of the day, it's not about them. It's about you and your, your emotional health. And if you don't express in a healthy way, and you don't ask for help, then things are just going to build up. And eventually, at some point in your life, you're going to just have, you're going to implode. And that's what we're seeing in stats. Oh, right? absolutely. When it comes to suicide rates and whatnot. So let's bring it back to breath work. Yes. The reason I say that is because, you know, I'm very honored to have been on having a ringside seat to your journey, yes. pretty much, not obviously since the very beginning, um, but since the beginning, I think of your personal development. And Interestingly, we actually didn't get together until after you'd already started doing some of this work. Yeah. In my opinion, there's nothing more attractive about a man than somebody <laughs> that is willing to look at themselves in the mirror and grow and really like lean in. Yeah. Um, so that was definitely obviously one of the reasons that I think that pulled us together and a common interest yeah. of obviously these things. And it was 
fascinating to me that out of all of those moments that you've already described today, that breath work has been one of the core things that you continue to do after all of this time. So tell us why did why do you love breath work so much? I think you know your own yeah. results is almost like a, a no brainer as yeah. to why, but why else? Breath work just gives you that instant result it's basically you have it with you all the time it's free it doesn't cost anything you don't need to go to the doctor to get a prescription for it yeah. uh, it's free it, it's it's the one thing that can change your mental emotional physical state instantly so if you're feeling tired you're feeling like crap you're you're in you're you're feeling tight and tense in your body literally a few minutes of breath work you completely change your state um you can you can get rid of that tension you can lift your mood you can raise your your, your emotional state you can regulate those emotions much more effectively and i think that's why i love breath work so much because it is it's well your breath is the key to life you see you, you don't breathe properly you're going to die very quickly yeah. uh so it's it's one of the most important things that anyone can focus on um and it's like i say you, you're sitting down do, uh, watching tv you're out having dinner the more conscious you become of your breathing amazing things can happen mm. and it's like i say it's always with you it doesn't cost a thing and i think that's the main thing people are always looking for that quick fix you want a quick fix tap into breath work <laughs> yeah because it's one of those things right i remember saying to to my brother yeah. we were talking about breath work and he's like i am breathing yeah <laughs> it's like, i'm breathing all the time why don't you do breath work and i'm like fair point like because like, that that's what most people think when they haven't kind of almost gone to the depths that you have to in terms of exploring it yeah. and i think that's where we've done a bit of a disservice i think in the wellness space is we talk about come to this breath work class yeah. it's like okay well people don't really know what breath work is which is why i want to dive into yeah. it with you because you know why do people need to pay attention to it well breath work is just is breath work is a buzzword at the moment yeah. um it's, it's what where everyone's into breath work um breath work and meditation and breath work and ice baths and breath work in this and breath work in yoga it's like breath work is just a variety it's basically just a form of breathing practices that have been around for centuries been around for thousands of years um and they have its roots in yoga but what most people don't realize is yoga before it became what it is today was breath before it came into all the movements um and it's been around for so so, so long it just before wim hof came on the before we, yeah well <laughs> wim hof made it more commercialized more popular in yeah. the what he teaches that retention breathing that's been around for thousands of years mm. but he's thank like thank god it brought it into the modern world um and made it popular which is good because it is a note is a powerful mm. practice to do yeah. um and it's our breath work's not it's not a fancy like magical thing that's gonna basically fix everything that's going on in your life but it's a catalyst to help you to achieve what you want yeah. if done correctly like most people say oh i breathe every day i'm living i'm live am i so why do i need to do breath work because most people don't breathe correctly they don't breathe optimally like before the industrial revolution here most of the population were breathing through the nose because we had fresh air mm. that's the way uh, that's why we're designed to breathe our nose is designed to breathe our mouth is not it's designed for eating but when the industrial revolution hit and we had all these toxic fumes like and everything we start to switch to mouth breathing because the smells were disgusting <laughs> and the same thing we go into we go into a, an area that smells wrong we automatically switch to mouth breathing because we can't smell through the mouth so we block the nose um and over a period of um maybe just a couple of hundred years you can see the change in the human um in the human race in terms of the structure of the face how the the amount of ailments and uh, and illnesses that have come about due to the fact that we're not breathing correctly mm. um so when we switch to the mouth one thing the nose has which is a great powerful tool it has a defense mechanism that stops pathogens from entering your lungs which our mouth does not mm. which is why it, it's so important that we breathe through the nose whereas most people if you look at the uh, people who are ill often and all the time mm. look at how they breathe they breathe mainly through the mouth they breathe high into the chest yep. um which we'll talk about in a second which creates more stress and anxiety um and if you look at people who are who rarely get sick and look at how they breathe slow deep steady breathing in through the nose out through the nose um and it's it's, it's not oh that's a coincidence no it's literally backed by science there's millions of studies done 
on the differences of breathing through the nose, through the mouth, um, time frames, quick, fast, all this type of stuff. There's so many studies to prove that and studies to show the reverse effect of, of this ease on the body when taught how to breathe correctly. Yeah. And it, conscious breathing with Anders Olsen was Alders? Anders? Yeah, Anders Olsen. Anders Olsen yeah. was the one of the first breathwork um, qualifications yes. that you did. And I remember thinking like oh what's that about and I got to be your, your guinea yes. pig while she was um, obviously studying and one of the things that I didn't know was how much mouth breathing um dehydrates you yeah and there's you know we're what 75 percent water if not more yeah. as human beings and most of the time we are walking around dehydrated and that affects everything it affects how our organs are functioning it's affecting our quality of thinking yeah. it's affecting our emotions and like I just simply breathing through my nose, I didn't realize it would have that knock-on effect mm. because that's mental health, that's emotional health, yep. it's physical health, and it's it's like surprising. So, what other surprising things are there to know about <laughs> conscious breathing, and maybe what is conscious breathing? Yeah, well, to again, breathing? see, a lot of people go to these breathwork sessions and they go, "Oh, I feel great," but the problem is, it's the same as going to the gym three times a week or going to yoga three times a week. It's a temporary solution. Conscious breathing is being aware of your breathing habits 24 seven. It's retraining your breath. So you can go to a breathwork session three times a week and you're going to feel amazing after maybe for a couple of hours after, but then life takes over you're back into your job, family, you get stressed again, you stop breathing through your mouth and all these problems come back. Mm -hmm. Conscious breathing is about taking control and retraining your breath. Because mm -hmm. remember your breath is like um, kind of using the whole work analogy. Your breath is the CEO of your body like the CEO of a company is if the CEO is not working correctly, if they're, for example, I used to be angry, creates fear within the company, every department underneath it is going to suffer and not going to function optimally and not going to produce the result. But breath's the same. If the breath is not working, if you've got suboptimal breathing patterns, mm. then your, your lungs, your digestive system, your, your muscles, your bones, your recovery, everything gets affected everything so by retraining your breathing and being more conscious you influence and become and create more homeostasis balance within the body um which again influences your mental health your emotional health your physical health um so conscious breathing is being aware of how you're breathing whether you're breathing through your nose through your mouth how fast you're breathing how deep you're breathing and yes if you're not used to it you're gonna be aware of it for like five seconds and then something's going to distract you and you're going to know but it's practice it's the same as anything to become better at it and become more conscious of it you've got to practice it you've got to become second nature it's got to become a habit yeah and then it becomes very natural and then it right? becomes very you don't natural have to think about it you're just doing it optimally exactly um and that's the key it's like uh, conscious breathing and optimal breathing is about breathing in and out through the nose okay um not through the mouth yeah i mean there's times obviously where you're supposed to breathe through the mouth and we'll talk about yeah. that shortly i think but i but for everyday breathing like yeah. every day it's like now when yeah. we're having a conversation yeah. you've got to you breathe know, through the mouth you've got to breathe, yeah, through, the, exactly. through, the, through the mouth but in between when i'm listening yeah. breathing through my nose exactly. is then the most efficient yes right? exactly so and it's just understanding because there's, there's four types of breathing um like um so in terms of ways you can breathe um you've got in through the nose and out through the nose what we call that energizing breath um so this helps to regulate um our energy so if you're breathing in through the nose, out through the nose, you're doing it quite fast, you can increase your energy output. You, know, you can increase your energy, you feel more energized. Mm -hmm. If you're breathing in through the nose for five seconds, out through the nose for five seconds, it has a more calming effect. You 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 create more consistent energy. Mm -hmm. So you're not going through like a hyper stage. Yeah, like um, anxiety. Yeah, anxiety, yeah. Or even if you know you've got, okay, I've got, I've got a, I'm about to step on stage and speak in front of, hundred people so i need to be energized i don't want i don't want to feel too relaxed <laughs> i need to i need to be switched yeah. on and that can help you breathing quickly through your nose can help that but if you most of the time you don't want to be energized all the time you yeah. want to have a consistent level of energy and that's what nasal breathing does for you mm -hmm. so um but then you've also got the second one which is breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth this is the most common one especially with breathwork practices yoga mm -hmm. um this is a calming breath a grounding breath so you breathe in through the nose, and as you breathe out through the mouth, you're calming your nervous system down. You're bringing yourself into a more calm, relaxed, restorative state. So that's good to do and if you're stressed out. Exactly. If you're stressed out, you're anxious, that's, that's a good one to do. So breathe deep into the belly through your nose, and then slowly 
breathe out through the mouth and that helps to calm you down. Um, then we've got the third one, which is breathing in through the mouth and out through the nose. This is a more different style. It's, it's not a more common one or a, a well-known one. It's more used in, I said, more advanced uh, kind of breath work or yoga style practices. It's, 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 it's a type of breath. It's called the soul breath because it's um, it can be used in more deeper meditation practices for those out of body experiences type of thing. Um, but for the general population, it's is no is no need for it <laughs> for everyday life type yeah. of thing. Um, and then we got the fourth style of breathing, which is in through the mouth, out through the mouth. The one we said not to do. Yeah. So this is only good in one situation, which is to relieve tension in the body. Mm. But if you're stressed, and then you do and you're breathing in through that, you're only going to make things worse. Yeah. So you've got to do the tension release breathing when you're in a relaxed state. When so your you, nervous system you is calm. That. So you do the grounding breath. Grounding breath. Yeah. In through the nose, out through yes. the mouth. You do that for a, a, a while. few minutes until you feel calm and relaxed, and then you and would, then you would do yeah. Then you would do a few minutes of the um, the tension release breath in through the mouth, out through the mouth. This is where the retention breathing, the the Wim Hof method comes in as well. You're doing it in through the mouth because you're activating consciously the the stress response, yeah. but then you're bringing it back down again, which we'll speak about um, in a bit as well. But you've got those four modalities of breathing of how you can breathe, mm. but every day, twenty four seven in through the nose out through the nose is what we want to try and retrain up ourselves to do um for the majority of our day when we're watching tv staring at a computer yeah. cleaning cooking whatever walking we want to train ourselves to use the nose and that's great news isn't it because you know there's a lot out there where you've got to have the best morning routines you've got to do yeah. this practice you've got to do that practice but the reality is like this is something you do at the same time as doing what you're already doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's exactly. No extra it's time. No extra time. No extra effort. It's just being conscious. Yeah. Um. It's the same with emotions. Being conscious of how you're feeling. Same with your mental state. Being conscious of how you're thinking. Mm-hmm. Same thing when you're training in the gym. Being conscious of how you're moving. Yeah. Be where you are. Be basically. where you are, basically. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny though because once you start to become more conscious of your breathing, and that then happens more naturally we are in a much more resourceful space to then listen and be the observer of perhaps negative exactly. thoughts that whereas but in the past we might have bought into those thoughts yeah. and the same with emotion we're less likely to get into an anxious state if we're operating from that mm. conscious breath as a default so it's almost like a prevention better than cure kind of mentality oh, when it comes to conscious breathing absolutely um conscious breathing like i say it's it's one of the best preventative measures around and it's also a good cure method as well if you're already struggling with pain or with with issues right now because it can help slow things down but your nervous system because again when you're stressed your body can't recover you can't heal yeah so when you're in chronic stress you're it's impossible to to heal from pain from disease from whatever you're experiencing so you have to bring yourself into that calm relax that what we call that parasympathetic state that rest and digest that recovery state until your body gets there it can't do what it needs to do to to heal you to help you yeah. and also i think that you know there's a lot of people listening to this that you know you've got the classic kind of goal of i want to lose weight yeah i want to get healthier and a lot of people don't link the way they breathe with losing weight mm. but that could actually be one of the core things that's blocking it absolutely because again it comes back down to to stress when your body can't lose weight under chronic stress and we can't lose fat should we say under chronic stress so chronic stress is a is a survival mechanism for the body Uh, well stress is not chronic stress but when we experience it for too prolonged period of time we don't let it go and deal with it it becomes chronic when it becomes chronic our body is constantly fighting all the time so when you're trying to lose fat your body's going no I'm, I'm, i'm in a survival state i need to keep this so you're going to what you tend to do is burn into other more important areas like um protein like your muscle tissue because your body doesn't need muscle tissue to keep you alive it needs fat to keep your organs safe so when you're trying to lose fat and you're constantly putting at pro-inflammatory foods processed foods sugars and that in your body you're training crazy hard in the gym when you shouldn't be you're adding more stress on top of an already stressed system mm. and you, then you go oh why am i not losing weight why am i not, why am I not dropping um and i feel tired i feel lethargic i feel exhausted because you're training and you're operating from that stress state yeah. so you need to bring yourself back down to a calm state so that this whole focus on going tense as you can in the gym great if your body's ready for it but most people they're not yeah. they're nowhere near ready to do anything that intense they've got to learn to breathe learn to calm themselves down first yeah. So this um, went the same thing with eating. Mm. Like um, 
if you want to be able to digest any type of food, if you've got issues with your gut, probably because you're under a, um, you're a lot of chronic stress within your gut, it doesn't know how to function correctly. So by retraining your breath, your breathing, it helps your digestive system to better digest food. And you don't feel bloated, you don't feel the pain all the time, you don't feel these these um, these issues with certain foods like, uh, like dairy and wheat. And it starts to actually absorb the nutrients. Yeah, you actually absorb it, yeah. Rather than thinking, well, I'm yeah. eating healthy and there's no result, chances are it's you're not absorbing the nutrients. Exactly. Well exactly. So it doesn't, like, the, the most important thing with stress, it doesn't matter what you eat, mm. it's about what state you're eating in. Yeah. And that's the key. You can eat a healthy diet all day long, yeah. but your body's not going to absorb it and use it if you're on a chronic in, under a chronic stress state. Yeah. So again, we're saying, you know, anchor yourself into yeah. chronic, chronic, chronic breathing. <laughs> Conscious breathing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, conscious, breathe, breathing. conscious breathing, yes. conscious breathing on a regular basis. Yeah. Like, if that becomes our default, then naturally everything else should fall in line. Like yeah. the CEO, exactly, yeah. that gave earlier. Exactly. If you've got a, if, exactly, if you've got a CEO who's who's calm under uh, um, under stressful situations, who cares about the people underneath them, who actually whatever they do has a direct positive effect on the people underneath them. The same as with your breathing. Mm-hmm. Of course, the whole company is going to function more as as more of as one unit as what the body's supposed to do, yeah. um, and that's the key. Is when you when your breath is in check and you're conscious of it, mm. like we said, easier. It's easier to process those thoughts that are going through your head. Yeah. Your thoughts slow down. You can then choose what you want to think yeah. instead of everything's disaster, everything's doom and gloom, um, and you can start to step away from all that chaos and start to see the bigger picture. Yeah. And, uh, you well, we, we've worked with a lot of leaders over the years and yeah. in, in, in high performers in various different roles. And you've worked with some pilots, yeah. and there was one pilot that springs to mind as you're talking about conscious breathing. Um, tell us about your experience with her. Um, well, she used to suffer from a- um, asthma, um, so I like, like using a pump, inhaler pump as well. And after the first meeting with her, um, her asthma attacks get severe. At that time, according to her, in changes of weather, uh, in stressful situations, this is what she taught herself to believe. Yeah. Basically, like I say, we're like the whole concept of oh, it's getting cold now. That means everyone's going to get sick. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a perception, yeah. and this is what she was perceiving as every time the weather changes, I get a severe asthma attack, or when I'm in a stress, stressful situation, I get a severe asthma attack. And you don't want that. No. Once you're flying a plane. No. Um, I don't want the no, pilot to be the that. They're flying the plane. Um, so what we did is just basically go and first of all, just for the first month, was getting her to be conscious, aware of how she breathed, mm. and just by that alone, without changing anything, she um actually started to slow down her breathing automatically just by being aware of it. And then when we started implementing um more strategies to become more conscious and change and retrain the breathing pattern to mm. in through the nose, out through the nose. The next time she had a severe asthma attack, it took her about 40, 45 minutes to control her breathing where she didn't need to use a pump. That was the first time. So she said to herself, I'm not going to use this. Mm. I'm going to use the techniques I've learned. I'm going to control my breathing. And she did. And the attack went away. Um, and then the next time she done it in 20 minutes, mm. then to a point where anytime it felt like coming down, she would just do a few minutes of breathing the attack wouldn't come up at all. So she got to the point where she never needed to use her inhaler again. Um, she always kept it with her just in case, but she never um, she never needed to use it again because every time she felt that stressful situation or the times when that, that attack would come on, mm. she would just lean into her, her breathing techniques, her conscious breathing that she'd learned mm. to control how her body responds yes. and that was just that was like very powerful for her. And then there were some natural side effects that she felt emotionally better, she felt more confident, she was able oh. to raise her kids in a more fun way. Yeah, there were so many other benefits. Even one massive benefit for her was her training. Like she does, um, she does the high intensity stuff, and she always used to get tired very quickly, sweating like anything. Um, and then after the first month of doing conscious breathing, she came to me and said, "My coach thinks I'm doing something outside of there because I'm I go for an hour now and I'm barely out of breath and I'm I don't sweat anywhere near as much uh, um, as I used to." Um, she thinks I'm doing extra training outside, um, and it's and that's that's what breathing does for you. Is when you're breathing correctly, you are better able to regulate your energy, mm. so you don't get fatigued as quick. You don't feel exhausted as quick. You can better regulate your energy through your training, through your work, through anything you're doing, mm. uh, to be more effective and more proficient at it. <laughs> and that's the whole key: is 
you see um, athletes nowadays are using breathwork modalities and practices to get that extra bit of boost mm -hmm. on their performance yeah. because it's such a big, big part of it. Like um, it, it can be the difference between winning and losing yeah. um, and that nowadays, whereas before it was all about how hard you can train, how good your nutrition is. Now is how optimal your breathing is. Yeah, exactly. And there's a lot of the visualization that you mentioned at the mm. start in there as well, yeah. in there for, for those kind of situations. There's there's so many other things that I want to yeah. dive into you about. And I think we're gonna bring you obviously back for another interview <laughs> to go deeper into some of the other modalities that link yeah. nicely to this. But I think conscious breathing is a really great place for anyone to start. Absolutely. What else do our listeners need to know about breathing? <laughs> they have a <laughs> what else did they need to know oh uh you see breathe breathing it just helps you to bring everything into focus um, within your life if you are so stressed out or your life's so chaotic where you can't see anything past what you're doing like what's going on in your life and you're sacrificing social time with friends family um your own health mm. breathing helps you to step back from there it helps everything to slow down it's kind of like time stopping yeah it's like you, you breathe and everything slows down to the point where you think oh okay i can now see all this stuff that's taking my energy and my time that is not resourceful for me mm. and i can start to choose make better choices yeah and i think that's so key it's and, and, it's, and it is difficult when you're in the chaos in, in the moment it is difficult to step back and breathe at the beginning until it becomes a habit mm. but the more you can break that cycle and you start to feel yourself becoming overwhelmed and um kind of getting sucked into the things is take a step back and go this is not healthy for me mm. so take a step back take a few deep breaths make sure deep in through the nose into your belly and then slowly breathe out just do that three times a long slow exhale and you're all, yeah so in through the nose out through the mouth and you're automatically just calm yourself down um and then you then make a decision it's almost <laughs> like you can see the movie of what's happening in front of you when you yeah. take a moment to do that isn't it yeah exactly. it's funny sometimes obviously like with coaching sessions or certain situations people might come to us and they're in a, a frenzied state yeah. you know they're, they're feeling particularly stressed out something's happened they're in that crisis mode and often they just want to tell you everything that's going on and that they're in it, you know, they're really in it and understandably so because, you know, yeah. life, life can be tough sometimes. But before we dive into that, it is always, okay, let's just pause. Yeah. Take let's a take breath. a breath. Exactly. Just a nice big breath in. <sighs> and it can make such a difference. Exactly. You breathe it out, you let it go. Let all that tension, that anxiety, that stress, mm -hmm. um, just, just breathe it out and then just keep doing that until you feel calm. Yeah, and then go again. And then go again. Never make a decision in an emotional stress state. Always bring yourself calm before you say, if you need to walk away, walk away, do some breath, get yourself into a more resourceful state, and then go back and make a decision. Because yeah. I, I don't know one instance where good decisions have been made from high emotional states. Yeah. I mean, in the, the like really high pressure situations where you're almost like in that flow yeah. state mm -hmm. pressure yeah that's that, different that's can be yeah. really healthy but for everyday people exactly. you know we're not often in those flow situations exactly. or putting ourselves into those states yeah. but even those people that are in those intense situations that need to make quick decisions, decisions yeah. They have done the groundwork. They have built resilience. They know how to make decisions exactly. from that heightened state, like the energizing breath that you yeah. mentioned earlier. Being in that state and then making decisions. Yeah. Well, look at people. Look at look at people like paramedics, soldiers, police. Yeah. They've got to make like life, um, like life and death decisions in a second. Yeah. But they've been trained to do so. Yeah. Whereas the modern, like the the average population, have not. Yeah. So we've been putting in, we're putting ourselves in situations where we need to make fast, quick decisions that could potentially affect you losing your job or your health or whatever. And we're thinking, oh, this is the right one. I'll go with it instead of taking time mm -hmm. to to make that because unless it is a life or death situation, then there's no reason to make a decision that quick. Yeah. You can always take time um, to to make it. It's, and you've got to train yourself to get to that point. And then there's a, like a trust thing, isn't it? It's yeah. like, well, I can't trust my own gut instincts. It's like, it wasn't your gut instinct, no. <laughs> right? That was Because you wasn't even conscious of what your gut was doing yeah. at that point. Mm. So because of everything you've already yeah. described. Exactly. That's it's just, yeah, it's, breathing is just so powerful. Um, and the more we lean into it, and it is, you don't have to do an hour every day of breath work to get mm. there. 
just be conscious start by being conscious every day when you wake up notice okay and do i have a dry mouth and then usually means you've been breathing through your mouth when you sleep yeah i'll turn it so that you can use sleep tape something to block your mouth so you breathe you force yourself to breathe through your nose so you that, that feels a bit weird at it first does, but yeah. actually it's really powerful definitely and the same as you're going through your day you're you're eating breakfast you're eating lunch you're sort of talking with your colleagues um uh, speaking with your family watching tv just take note of how you're breathing mm. and um just become aware and that's the first step Bit, uh, half of the work is being aware of what you're doing <laughs> the other half is retraining yourself yeah. so but focus on the first 50 percent. just become mm. aware and um, that, that that automatically creates a more positive environment i think to add to that as well is what what you just said there earlier about time mm. almost like slowing down yeah. and being aware is key we live in a busy world it's yeah. fast paced and we tend to struggle to be truly present mm. so when we are being conscious and aware time actually starts to feel like it's slowing down exactly and that is like a superpower because then you are where you are you're enjoying your day-to-day you're not running off into the future you're not in the past you're exactly where you need to be and therefore everything increases your productivity your quality of thinking your mental health will improve your relationships will improve emotionally you'll just feel better you're likely to see you're likely to see more opportunities that are out there as well. Like, there's just so many benefits. I know we're biased because you know <laughs> we're taking the time to sit down and talk about this, yeah. but I think they're not obvious, and they no, weren't obvious not. to me. When you're when you're when you're running around doing a million things, you miss everything, mm. uh, and you end up taking three times longer to do what what you want to do. Whereas if you slow down, you're a lot more productive. You get things done, and you notice mm. more. And that's the key is just slow, slow it down. I said, life, life's a game. It's like, don't take it too seriously. It's like, don't, if you see every single day as a fight <laughs> to, 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 to do, to, to complete your to-do list or to make sure this happens or that happens mm-hmm. is you kind of lost the point really of um, what it is to live is slow things down and just try and be more present mm-hmm. as much as you can. And yeah, there are going to be instances where stress is needed because yeah. stress is not bad. You do need it. Yep. Chronic stress is not a good. That's what we're trying to avoid. Yep. Is stressful situations are good when you're giving a presentation, doing a talk, starting a new job. You need that stress to help you adapt. But you need to understand and be aware of when it's becoming unhealthy, and then to slow things down again. Jonathan. Yes. It's weird calling you Jonathan. I always <laughs> call you John. Your mom calls you Jonathan. Yes. Yes, she does. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So, Jonathan, thank you so much for coming to be a guest on your own show. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you for having me here. I'm definitely going to bring you back in and put you under the spotlight to speak about something called quantum flow and cold therapy, which are two other significant passions of yours, but also areas of expertise. So I'm looking forward to that. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you so much. I've had a blast being back on here after eight months yeah. i want to say about yeah, that yeah. but you'll be you'll be back on soon right Hope yes you. i will be i'll be back on soon don't worry <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode and you haven't done so already hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode then share it with a friend who you think might benefit spread the word that's how we're going to impact the world by helping each other we appreciate you so much and as always unconditional love and wellness to you